Hello and welcome to Palace Fan TV for Jim and Jay's final say. I'm Jim Daly and this is our Sunderland review video, unfortunately. Um, as you can see, I'm getting my studio sort of sorted at the moment. I've got my Palace shirts there. Uh, so I'm working on uh, getting myself set up in my new location. Um, Palace, though, on Monday lost 1-0 to Sunderland, which is becoming a bit of a familiar feeling. We lost to them last season as well at home around this time of year. And uh, in both games, I think we went into it expecting a win and coming away with nothing. Um, the main talking point from Monday night was the goal. Jermaine Defoe scored in the second half. Let's clear that up because there's been a lot of talk about who was at fault. Um, it was Dan and Hennessy that sort of collided. Down the other end from me, I was in the home still, I couldn't really see it. But on reflection, the ball goes through and Scott Dan can see Hennessy coming out to get it. And he thinks, right, Wayne's got this. So I'm going to try and block off Defoe. And then Hennessy stops and at that point, Dan is like, uh, okay, now what do I do? And he tries to clear it. But by that point, uh, he sort of the weight is on the other side of his body. So instead of going with his left foot, which would have been easier first time, tries to go with his right foot, loses his footing, gets a foot on it, and it takes it into the foe's path. And by this time, Hennessy has decided to come again to get the ball, and then knocks it away from Hennessy and into the penalty area. And Defoe has a simple tap-in. So really, it's, it's a kind of a combination. But if you are looking to... to I guess they blame anyone. It probably is Hennessy because he either comes for it and goes for it and gets the ball or he doesn't come for it and he lets Dan deal with it. And that uncertainty led to the goal. Um, but there is a third party as well, uh, which is Yannick Balassi, who gave away the ball in the centre of the park uh, that allowed Sunderland to break. And that's fine, but he gave it away trying to do a little turn in the centre of the park. And really, those turns are for out on the wing. You know, you don't do that in the middle because it puts your team under pressure. And especially as for most of the game, Sunderland had very clearly come to play one game plan. That was sit deep, break up Palace attacks and hit on the counter. They've done it a few times in the first half and a few times in the second half. And it was very clear that every time they got the ball, they were going to get it to Defoe as soon as possible. And unfortunately, Balassi took a massive risk doing that turn and it put Palace uh, under pressure. And then losing it meant they could turn it over to Defoe very quickly. So a catalyst of errors really for the goal. Um, but that happens in football, you know, and you, you're always going to get that. Uh, no matter who you play. The main frustration thing really was that Palace struggled to really create any clear-cut opportunities despite dominating most of the possession. Um, the the wingers, Balassi and Zaha, didn't really have brilliant games. Wilf showed some fantastic skills, which we know he can do. But when it came to the end product, every cross was, was over-hit or under-hit. And um, there wasn't really any clear-cut chances as a result. Connor Wickham returned up top and played the low-man role. And a lot of Palace fans on social media have been sort of moaning about him, saying it wasn't very good. And he didn't have a massive impact. But a lot of that came from the fact that the service wasn't really there for him. You know, when ball went up to him, he held it up a few times and played it off. But where was the killer pass or the killer cross for him to get onto? It wasn't wasn't really there. And our whole game plan breaks down when our wingers aren't having brilliant games, unfortunately, and providing the, the man up top with service, um, which is something that's kind of happened all season, really. So as a result there, despite Palace having a lot of possession, um, that's kind of where it broke down for us in the final third. And, you know, I, we looked very kind of blunt going forward, to be honest. And um, I think that's a bit of a worry. Now, we're going to get that at home. We've said before, Palace set up quite well away from home to play on the counter. But at home, teams are going to come and play like that, like Sunderland did, which was kind of like us a couple of years ago under Pulis, you know. So we're not, you know, it's not... Um, rare for us to be playing against teams like that we, we know how it is from the other side uh, but now we are the team that has to break those teams down you know it shows how far Palace have come that we have to now find a work out how to break down teams that play like, like that at Selhurst um, so there's a, there's work to be done I guess on uh, on the home form because we're going to get teams like that every week even May United came and played like that it's not just going to be the small teams it's going to be everyone now because everyone knows that Palace can be a threat going forward uh, so Pardew's got to have to work out how to play against teams that play very defensively at home against us. Um, I thought as well that the fullbacks didn't particularly have a brilliant game either. Ward and Soiree probably had two of their worst games for Palace, which is frustrating because they're two very good players. Ward was sort of caught out of position a few times. And when Watmore came on, the young Sunderland forward, he, he spun uh, Joel a few times and Wardy suddenly looked very sort of uh, like a fish out of water almost. And Soiree had a weird game where he just... Sort of kept letting possession go out. He sort of didn't have his head on the game or his touch right. And when he broke forward, as we know is, is one of his strong points, instead of crossing it, he was always looking for Wilf or looking for Yannick and didn't look like he was confident enough in getting the ball over himself. 
Um, so there was multiple areas really where it wasn't really happening for Palace and unfortunately when that happens uh, everything kind of breaks down. Um, so it was a frustrating uh, day really but you know we've had some great results this season this is only just one result out of a whole season and I'm sure Palace will bounce back as they have done already this season when they've had bad results. Uh, they certainly show they can uh, they can recover but the next game is Newcastle at home another home game against a team that will play defensively so is it time maybe for, for things to change up? Do we maybe go two up top and go a bit more attacking? You know, Punch and played in number 10. Didn't have a brilliant uh, a brilliant half. Was taken off at half time. Sacco came on. Looked okay, but unfortunately picked up an injury. You know, if he'd have stayed on, maybe things have been different. Bamford came on and Shamak in the second half. Both looked neat and tidy, but didn't really offer much. But maybe we start with Shamak uh, on Saturday and Wickham and we go a bit more direct uh, against a team that are probably going to come and sit defensively. So a lot of questions to be answered there. Um, but that is the Premier League for you, isn't it? So there you go. Those are my thoughts on Monday night. Um, here's Jay from the Eagles Beak with his thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy these videos. Drop a like if uh, if you enjoyed it as well. Comment below with your thoughts. Where did it go wrong for Palace and where can they fix it for future weeks? Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter and Snapchat as well. And uh, see you again soon. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back to Palace Fan TV. This is Jim and Jay's final say looking back at that game against Sunderland. Um, what can I say? <laughs> Frustrating, disappointing, um, all those words that you can think of that would explain something that happened last night. Terrible. Um, in our last game in the Premier League, we travelled to Liverpool, 1-2-1, one, one, um, and then we had a two-week break, which perhaps didn't work in our favour. We were on a bit of a roll after drawing against United, beating Liverpool, and then international break comes along two weeks of no Premier League football and then we return I wouldn't say we're at lackluster but we faced a team which it happened several times last season and you know I hate to say it, it's been said all over social media but we've been all right this season against teams and we've beaten Villa at home um you know, we've beaten teams that we should be beating at home um I'm I'm really struggling to think of how to explain that game last night. Sunderland came with a game plan. They got nine men behind the ball most of the time. We just weren't clinical enough. I mean, our crossing was poor. Punching really frustrated me. I hate, really hate picking out players who perform badly. I always think that everybody everybody can have a bad game every now and again, but punching for me, three corners, same, exactly the same near post, clearance, three consecutive corners to do that. I really questions, um, really questioned my patience with punching and that. And, you know, that led to him being substituted at half time. But we just couldn't get behind the Sunderland defence. They were dogged. They were very well organised. But we just couldn't, you know, we did. Connor Wickham was crying out for that killer cross right into that edge of that six yard area. He was there most of the time waiting for it. We were either overhitting crosses or weren't beating the first man. Wilf and Yala worked tirelessly throughout the game, I have to say. I mean, midway through the second half, they looked absolutely shattered. You know, But they kept on going, kept plugging away. For me, the best players were Kabai and MacArthur in the middle. They just kept working so hard. I'm not saying others didn't, but there was a few players had an off game. Soiree, I think, had a... Yeah, probably one of his worst performances we've seen of late from him, actually. Um, couldn't really get the ball under control. Struggled getting forward. I think he only put one of his you know, trademark crosses in, um, and that was later on in the second half. But the goal was just... It, I had horrible memories of the Villa game last season where Scott Dan made a, an error which let in Benteke to score. Very similar again. Different part of the pitch. J just lever it, Scott. I mean, you know... I, I, I would... I would kind of lay some blame at Hennessy's feet because if Hennessy hadn't come quite so far then Defoe would have still had something to beat rather than just knocking into an empty net. It, Dan should have got rid of it in the first place so you know the fault lies with him initially but I would question Hennessy's positioning really for that for that goal. I mean he, he, for me he was too far out. If he was on a penalty area then that ball was knocked a little bit forward and he may well have just got to that before Defoe would have done to, to knock it into the net but hey you know, games happen like this. We saw it a lot last season. Haven't seen it quite so much this season. But when team, when you know, where Sunderland have come to defend against Palace to get something out of the game, and they went back and got it. I don't agree with the tactics, but in their position, if we're in that position, and we've seen it so many times, 
I'd have been chuffed for three points in their position. That's what I need to get any points on the board. You know, we, we've seen it. We've experienced it against us. We've experienced it for us, you know, in the past. So, you know, fair play to them. You know, the game plan. We didn't like it. We didn't like the team more time wasting, but, you know, every no team plays the same way. Every team has their aim of getting the points and, and needing points. So, yeah, it just wasn't our night. It really wasn't. You know, the ball didn't drop for us. We didn't make our own luck, admittedly. It was an off night and hopefully, you know, Pardew, you know, would have a lot of things to say in, you know, after the game, you know, particularly building up to Newcastle home on Saturday. It's a crazy Premier League this season. It really is. Anybody can beat anybody. They really can. And, uh, you know, disappointed to lose at home to Sunderland. But, you know, we've picked up points against teams which I probably wouldn't have put us down to beat. So it, it really is top to serve this season. It's going to continue that way as well between now and the end of the season. You know, we're 10th in the table at the moment. Um, you know, pushing for you know a top ten spot. You know, we all, a lot of us said you know if we if we finish higher than we did last season, it will be a successful season, and we're still on course to do that. So, um, yeah, I'm sure Pardew will address some of the uh, problems we had in the game yesterday. So I look forward to Newcastle at home on Saturday, actually. So we'll see how how that plays out. Thanks for watching these videos. By all means, you know, share the comments, subscribe to Palace Fan TV below this video, and um, leave us your feedback for future videos. But we'll be back. Um, post Newcastle, hopefully with some happier news or happier, happier games to talk about. But uh, thanks for watching and uh, catch you soon. Bye.